Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar with teddybaldessar.com. And in this video, we're looking at the brand new Junghans Max Bill Chronoscope Bauhaus. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldessar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, deep dive in this timepiece, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout the video, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description down below where you can see more and purchase the watch. But without further ado, let's jump into the video and take a closer look at this watch. Now, a model family that is very much near and dear to my heart is the Junghans Max Bill. We have covered essentially almost every model from the broad collection that encapsulates the Max Bill, including the three hand models, hand winding, as well as the chronoscope. With the latter of those being the direction that we are going to be looking at for this video with a new iteration with the Max Bill Bauhaus chronoscope. So back in 2019, Junghans released a limited edition model celebrating 100 years of the opening of the Bauhaus School of Design, featuring a black PVD coated case to celebrate that 100 years with a cool emblematic case back showcasing the facade of the influential school of design. The model family was well received and sold out quite quickly. Nowadays, we have the Junghans Max Bill Automatic, which is one of the most popular models from Junghans that we offer and is well received because of its combination of infusing the classic design DNA that comes from designer Max Bill, a Swiss designer that attended the Bauhaus School of Design and then shifted into developing developing watches and wall clocks for the brand in the late 1950s and 60s. It was probably only a matter of time before we saw a chronoscope version become standardized production. And here we're going to be looking at exactly that, the infusion of that cool array of red and touch of red throughout this watch while getting an emblematic case back honoring the roots of design that this watch is going to emulate. Now let's talk first about the wearability of this piece. Now, the Maxville Chronoscope is one of those watches that is unlike really anything else you're gonna be able to wear. When you look at the dimension set, you begin to understand why I make that point. Diameter of 40 millimeters, thickness of 14.4 millimeters, and a lug to lug of only 42.1 millimeters. One thing I mentioned when talking about this watch is understanding its lineage of coming from a design that was intended to be focused on a wall and placed on a wall with their wall clock designs. Max Bill's first project with Junghans was to create a kitchen wall clock. From there, that's where he started to shift into wrist watches. For the chronoscope, it is going to extend out to 40 millimeters compared to the conventional 38 millimeters for the automatic version, but still wearing very compact for its size. 42.1 millimeters is ridiculously compact for a case diameter of 40 millimeters, but I would say this one still wears relatively true to size. As what you're looking at here is basically a full dial wash with no bezel. The dial to bezel ratio for this piece creates a visual entrancing type of effect that makes this, again, wear like nothing else on the market. The 14.4 millimeter thickness is definitely going to be paid to the dome sapphire crystal that is going to be present on this watch. If you do recall from the past, acrylic crystal crystals were the common place for many of these Max Bill models, now shifting into Sapphire. And one thing I definitely want to applaud them on is not losing that hue and look that can sometimes come with adopting a Sapphire crystal for uh, an acrylic. Because acrylics, despite some people not maybe being as much of a fan, there is something so warm and unique about the hue of the crystal itself. They were able to mirror that effect while still going and showcasing a Sapphire on top. The case finishing is a departure from the traditional polished finishing typically offered by Junghans, instead opting for a fully matte silver finish with the bulbous rounded case back, almost mirroring the crystal, helping the watch not sit so high on the wrist, despite a good portion of that thickness coming from that dome crystal. At the three o'clock position, we have a 5.5 millimeter unsigned matte push-pull crown set between the matching four and a half millimeter pump pushers at two and four o'clock for your chronograph functions. Peering through the crystal, we have a minimal white silver dial at its edges that follows the curvature of the crystal, creating an illusion that the dial is rising up from the watch itself. Around the edge is going to be small minute markers that are set between long and thin hour indices, reaching towards the middle of the dial being weighted down by loom plots at every 15 minutes with two plots denoting the 12 o'clock 
and a single plot marking every three hours after. Following a traditional vertical chronograph register display dictated by the Baoju 7750, there's a 30 minute counter at 12 and a 12 hour counter at six. Instead of the running 60 seconds, here you have the writing of Jung Han's chronoscope at nine and a date window at three that has a subtle faceting of the window and red date text set against a color match white backdrop. At center, matte hands containing red loom accompany a matte steel chronograph second hand that completes the dial. Given the limited surface area occupied by that superluminova, the legibility in low lit situations is not gonna be exceptional, but probably as much as you can ask for more of a dress oriented and minimalist style chronograph of this type. Now flipping the watch over, we have a decorated semi-transparent sapphire case back depicting the Bauhaus building facade, where the building is depicted as an architectural drawing done in white and gray, ex except for the notable standout red door and unpainted windows, allowing for a slightly obscured view of the J880.2, or in other words, a Valju 7750. When it comes to establishing the standard for integrated chronograph calibers from Switzerland, Valju sets that standard. The 7750 and the 53 are going to be the leaders in that regard and are going to set that entry door position for a brand that's opting for an integrated chronograph on the inside. This movement has been in production for decades and has been put into millions of watches to this point. It operates at a beat frequency of 4 Hz, 28,800 vibrations per hour, does offering hand winding, and offers 48 hours of power reserve when the chronoscope function is not engaged. One point of consideration for these values that I'll bring up is is going to be the thickness of the movement, around eight millimeters thick just for the movement alone. This is why you'll see many watches that are featuring a value caliber, typically being in that 13 and a half to 15 millimeter thickness range for that completely cased up movement. One other disclaimer I do wanna mention about these movements is do not get alarmed if you feel the movement of that rotor when you have this watch on wrist. Valjus are known for having a louder rotor movement on the inside. The movement is cam actuated with stopping and starting with that two o'clock pusher and four o'clock for your reset. Anecdotally speaking, for the model that we have on display for this video. We tested it across five different positions for accuracy, running at plus six to plus nine seconds per day. For general operation, you're looking at 28,800 vibrations per hour, four hertz, and a power reserve of 48 hours. So now let's unpack some final thoughts on the Junghans Maxwell Chronoscope. So I am an owner of the original Chronoscope model. Absolutely love it. It's a watch that probably gets more compliments than almost any other watch in my collection, which is kind of funny to think about because it's nowhere near the most expensive watch. It just is a watch that is, again, unlike many things that you're going to see out there, it creates almost this wall clock effect on the wrist while still maintaining a pretty wearable case. So just to begin with some of the cons and things that people might bring up quickly, uh, one that's a little strange is no running seconds. So if you're somebody that likes to have on the second accuracy and do not wanna have the chronograph running at all times, that could be an issue for you. Also, in addition to that, the thickness might be a little bit much for certain people out there. And finally, you are paying about a $200 premium compared to the standard chronoscope models from the Maxville family. But now let's shift over into the pros. One thing I'll say, the style and the use of space on this piece is phenomenal. One thing that's an issue with many chronograph watches on the market is finding a balance between those chronograph registers and the space to not make it feel so cluttered. Here you're not dealing with an overly large watch, but the way that it's able to still display the time and information necessary while not making it feel cluttered is a masterclass in this price tier. The case dimension sets are very wearable despite again being very different. It is going to create a lot of conversation and grab some interest from people that are really into this classic uh, minimal and maybe more contemporary style of design that is very popular at the moment. And then the case back as well as the touch of red for those that were maybe on the fence of liking how this was laid out, but perhaps found the original wash slightly sterile or maybe too safe and wanted something with a bit more pop, this is where you can have that combination of classic, never doing too much, doing what is necessary, but then infusing a concept of color that I think will allow people to maybe have some more fun in the process uh, and have a watch that is just that much more eye-catching. All right, guys, well, thank you again so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That really does help out the content and the channel. Also, in addition to that, if you are in the market for this watch, it is available on teddyballthestar.com. Teddy Ball 
Flawlesser.com is an authorized dealer of over 30 brands. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. How we're also able to fund all of our video production and all of our content covering watches across the industry is through selling watches. So if you are in the market for a watch, we'd love to have your business because it allows us to keep doing what we're doing. We love what we do. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.